Hello naturalists, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm here to share a wonderful nonfiction text called A Nest is Noisy. This is written by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. This read aloud is intended for elementary students, but everyone's welcome. And I'm gonna be asking some questions during the story for you to think about. So if you're watching with someone else, you could pause the video at those times and share your ideas if you'd like to. It's springtime here in Michigan as I'm recording this video, and I've been noticing a lot of bird activity lately. I can even hear some chirping outside my window right now. Have you seen any birds building nests when you've gone outside lately? A Nest is Noisy is an informational text about how different bird species change their environments to help their babies survive. You can see here some different examples of nest types from various animal species. You may notice as I read that I skip some parts of the book, and that's because the authors include information about nests of some other animals. Today, I'm really trying to learn more about birds. Now readers, the authors pack lots of information into each paragraph. So I'm gonna stop and summarize important ideas as I go to make sure I'm understanding what the authors are teaching. You'll have some chances to try this too. A nest is noisy. A nest is noisy. It is a nursery of chirp chirping, buzzing, squeaking, peep peeping, bubbling babies. A nest is welcoming. Many birds assemble a cradle for their eggs knitting together leaves and twigs and softening it with grass, hair, moss, fluffy seeds, leaf skeletons, or even a snake's old skin. They might also add candy wrappers, plastic bags, and bits of cloth or paper. Now readers, pause for a second. Let's make sure we're understanding what the author's big idea is here. Well, I see the heading is a nest is welcoming. And I remember that the author used the word cradle in that first sentence of the paragraph. Many birds assemble a cradle for their eggs. So it's making me think that the author is saying that birds want to create a really welcoming, safe environment for their eggs. And then the author listed all different types of materials. I think the big idea here is different birds use lots of different materials to create a safe place for their eggs. See how I did that? I paused. I reviewed some of the information from that page, and I came up with a big idea. Next time, it's your turn. A nest is enormous, or tiny. One of the largest bird's nests is the dusky scrub fowls. Their mounded nests are made of decomposing leaves and twigs that can measure more than 36 feet in diameter and nearly 16 feet high. The smallest bird's nest, the bee hummingbirds, is a golf ball size cup of moss, lichen, bark, and leaves, usually wrapped in spider's silk. The stretchy silk lets the nest expand as the babies grow larger. A nest is spiky. Elf owls and cactus wrens select a prickly nesting place as a refuge from slithering snakes and other, other hungry hunters. A nest is hot. Some South American oven birds forge an adobe oven made with thousands of mud and clay pellets. Baked in the sun, the nest is a cozy place for their eggs. A nest is neighborly. There's safety in numbers. Some nest builders live in colonies where there are more ears and eyes to raise an alarm when predators, animals that eat other animals, are near. Baja weavers, excuse me, baya weavers build nests that hang from thorny trees or palm fronds like upside down bottles. Swinging in the air from a woven tube each nest is protected from lizards, snakes, and bigger birds. Now readers, pause for a minute. What do you think the author's big idea is from this part of the book? I noticed the author used the word neighborly. 
in the heading. The first sentence of the paragraph, there is safety in numbers. I think the author is teaching here that many birds build their nests close to other bird nests, and they can help keep each other safe that way. A nest is peculiar. Cave swiftlets concoct a nest made entirely of saliva. Swinging its head from side to side, the male spits long pearly strands onto the wall of a cave that harden into a lacy bowl when exposed to air. Birds nest soup made from swiftlet nests is among the most expensive foods eaten by humans. That is peculiar. A nest is muddy. Flamingos erect a heap of mud, grass, and stones up to 12 inches tall, and then lay a single egg in a depression at the top. The height protects the egg from changing water levels and excessive ground heat. Both parents feed their hatchlings crop milk from their digestive tracts until they leave the nest. A nest is adopted. Some creatures choose nests made by others to brood their offspring. Cowbirds and common cuckoos lay their eggs in nests of other birds, where they are hatched and raised by the mother of a different species. A buff-breasted paradise kingfisher flies like a torpedo at a, at a termite nest, smashing into the hard mound with its beak, and sometimes dying on impact, to blast a hole into the side. Inside the mound, they peck out a tunnel leading to a chamber where they lay their eggs. Termites seal off the tunnel from the inside so that their nests are separate. Readers, stop and think here. What is the author's big idea from this part of the book? A nest is noisy. Buzzing, swishing, rustling, flapping, and humming with babies. But only until they are ready to fly, swim, or crawl away. Then, a nest is quiet. Wow. It's amazing to me how different species change their environment to help their young survive. Which nest type did you find most impressive? Now, re readers, remember how I paused throughout the book to summarize the author's big ideas? It's an important thing to do, especially when you're reading a nonfiction text that's packed with information. Friends, this week, Mr. Siegel and I both captured videos of robin's nests that we noticed, and you can see those videos in the presentation about bird migration that we put together. So I challenge you to go outside with your family and look for some bird nests of your own. Be sure not to touch or disturb the nest, but it would be neat if you could figure out what material the bird has used for its nest and any strategies that you noticed it's using to protect its young. Good luck. Thanks for watching.